Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society. I'm here with Keith Moore. We're going to talk about two of my favourite subjects, Captain Cook and clocks. And not just one clock, two clocks. And here they are. Have a look at these. Two very important clocks, Brady. They're like little twins, aren't they? They're very impressive. Captain Cook, to an Australian like me, is most famous for his voyage on the Endeavour. But these clocks are associated with his second voyage on a ship called Resolution. That's right. He commanded HMS Resolution. Tobias Furno was in the Adventure, a sister ship, and they voyaged off to the South Seas again. They were still trying to come up with good clocks or chronometers, as they were calling mm. them, to have on ships, and a lot of it was to do with longitude. And there was a very, very famous clock or chronometer on this voyage called the K1. Yeah. This is very famous. It's still on display now, and it really, mm. it really cracked the nut of longitude at sea. Yeah. But it's less known that there were three other chronometers on the ship, and these are two of them. These mm. are two of the other three. Yeah. So these chronometers were by John Arnold, very good clockmaker of the period, and they were intended to test timekeeping aboard the voyage. So they were trialling one clock against another, and the sort of daddies of marine chronometers, which later in the 19th century became standard issue on ships. Now we're going to have a closer look at these in a minute, but before we do, just to show that we're not making this stuff up, I'm going to show you something over here. We have a whole Captain Cook section over here, don't we, Keith? We do, yeah. And I'm going to grab some books to do with this second voyage. There's volume one for Keith, volume two for me. So this is the, the official account, if you like, of the second voyage. Well, there he is. There's Captain James Cook. And you can see it's a voyage towards the South Pole and around the world, performed in His Majesty's ships, the Resolution and the Adventure in the years 1772 up to 1775. Four years, let's say. Mm, yeah. So this is uh, a variety of people contributing to it, including Furno. He is Cook over here, who's captain in the Resolution, and it gives you a list of the officers and men in each of the voyages. But these accounts, uh, they're so well written because they've got stories of robberies and adventures and theft Absolutely and right. discovery. Yeah. They're like, a, it's a real ripping yarn. It is, but here we have some of the things that they took with them on the voyage. So he took sauerkraut with him and this was to prevent scurvy during the voyage. So this is cabbage cut small, which is put into salt, juniper berries and anise seeds and then fermented. He issued this to his men and they didn't lose a man on this voyage to scurvy, which was unheard of at this period. Okay. Uh, he wrote a Royal Society paper on the subject. Okay. Let's nail down these clocks. So the Board of Longitude agreed with Mr. William Wales and Mr. William Bailey to make astronomical observations. So these two chaps, they're the two astronomers. There's an astronomer on each ship. That's right. So they're, they're in charge of the instruments for that and the clocks. And you can see that the longitude board here, the same board, furnished them with the best of instruments for making both astronomical and nautical observations and experiments. And likewise with four timepieces or watch machines. Three made by Mr. Arnold and one made by Mr. Kendall. So K1 is Mr. Kendall's instrument. These by Mr. Arnold. These are two of the three. Where's the third one, Keith? Ah, I wish I knew. Yes, we don't have it, unfortunately, in this collection. OK. They're fabulously illustrated, these things. So they managed to get to Easter Island. So here's... Oh, a, look with the ears, the ornate ears. Mm -hmm. Look at this one, Easter Island, the famous Easter Island statues. Yeah, some of the islands had been visited before, famously Tahiti, of course. But they did go to new places and they managed to get inside the Antarctic Circle, which is, is something that no British captain certainly had done before. So it was, it was a voyage of exploration, a really serious one. There's a great picture here. This is actually Bailey, the astronomer. These mm -hmm. are his observations from the trip, using the clocks, of course. Look at that. Look at the rough sea. It's all happening. Are those water spouts or is it lightning? Oh, yeah, maybe it's maybe water, spout. water spouts, I think. And look at the little resolution, the little ship there in the sea. No wonder it was hard to get an old clock to work and getting tossed all over the place there. Mm. Let's come back to these clocks for a minute. So you can see they're numbered. So you can see this is Royal Society number 36 and Royal Society number 37. So they were on the instrument list of the Royal Society. And you can lift these out there for. Wow. And you can see the mechanisms rather well. John Arnold is very proud of his work. So he's inscribed the plate on the back there. We'll get a few close ups there for all you uh, clock enthusiasts. I know you're going to want to look at the springs and mechanism. I mean, 
the million dollar question is, Keith, do these still work? We, we do have the, uh, the winding handle there. You know, they are in theory working instruments, although we don't work them. The faces are just very, very slightly different. Apparently one of them got dropped aboard ship and therefore slightly damaged during the voyage. And presumably when it went back to Arnold for repair, he just took the opportunity to uh, put a new dial in it. One of the reasons we haven't done them before in objectivity is precisely because they've been around the world again. They were with the National Maritime Museum's recent exhibition on ships, clocks and stars, and therefore they've been to uh, Australia, China and the USA as part of the, the exhibit. So in the 1700s, these travelled around the world, and then yep. like, now they're still travelling around the world. Just by aircraft and not by sailing ship. Amazing. This is Captain Cook's clock. Indeed, yes. HMS Endeavour, he took this timepiece with him, and off it went to Australia. They would have got it out particularly to uh, observe the transit of Venus on Tahiti. That's really what they wanted it for. And that's why it's on this tripod arrangement. It's how it would have sat in the tent in Tahiti when they were doing their astronomical observations.